This is where the carnival begins, at the Unity Stadium in Dakar. It's where all the Group A and B matches are going to be played. Three of the favourites play in these groups. The host, Senegal, the past winners, Nigeria and Cameroon. And it's the top two in each group that go through to the quarter-finals. This is an absolutely fantastic stadium by anyone's standards. I think the capacity is about 60,000 and when it's full to capacity, it must be electrifying out here. They've walked with the pitch and, you know, the playing conditions are perfect. I wish I was playing. Nigeria have some real pace up front, and here's a, another excellent opportunity, which is well taken. And after 30 minutes, Nigeria take the lead. Well, Kessie's lost it there. And uh, still a chance for Bukandi, he scored! Sane set him up, and Bukandi, who's threatened an equaliser, has got one after 38 minutes. And Nigeria credit all their own troubles there. And a great goal by Kishi. And that will surely win it with less than two minutes to go. I only want a hot dog. It's hungry work being a TV presenter, but there's no shortage of choice here in the stadium's uh, food hall. People back home rave about the beef and onion pies at Ayrson Park. But well, how about this for a half-time snack? That's Dakar belly. Morocco press forward, but they're offside here. No, the referee has waved play on. Boulal has rugby available, and that surely is the winner. Zaire will be furious about that. Mukanya. Oh, they're offside on the far post. Kenya scored and the goal stands, it's 1-1. One, one. Sia Sia. And the Poju now, good run by him. Has Yakini available? 1-0 Nigeria. Seven minutes in, they have the lead. Alaho. A bit of space for the cross now. Yakini's available. Oh, whiplash reflexes by Yakini, and it's 2-0 to Nigeria. What an outstanding piece of skill by Yakini to chest the ball down and score in one movement. Izugu comes across to cover. He's caught a dongo and a penalty right in the death for Kenya now. They have a chance of a consolation goal by Meche and a chance to make it 2-1, and they've scored. Zaire pressing here. Balenga, good save, Bell. Tuba, Zaire ahead inside two minutes. Mafedi's cross, Kunde with a header. Oman Big, that's the equaliser, 1-1. Honours even then, Cameroon and Zambia go through and the Moroccans go out. This is downtown Dakar. They call it the crossroads of the continent because here is where black Africa meets Muslim Africa. The old meets the new. It's a pretty crazy place, especially today, because host Senegal meet Kenya in a game they must win. Otherwise, they could go out at the first hurdle. Candy flicks on for Senegal. Senny arriving, and he's got there, 1 0. Sisse with a header. Yes, but Candy makes it too. Yum with that long cross. Diagne arriving and scores. 3 0. Senegal are through. No surprises then in Group A. Nigerian Senegal through and Kenya are on the plane home.
The other half of the competition is in Ziggenshaw, in the heart of Senegal's rebel country. This is Moses, our driver. Some people call him Eddie Murphy. Look, we've been driving such a long time now. I mean, how far is it from Dakar to Ziggenshaw? Well, Dakar to Ziggenshaw, if you take, uh, if you go via Senegal now, it'll be about 600 kilometers. This is exactly how I started out as a youngster, you know. I, I was out here playing in these sort of conditions and, uh, you know, you don't have any footwear and you often lose toenails and stuff, so, I mean, we're sort of going to be watching the African Nations Cup and to believe that these, the players that we're going to be watching came from this sort of humble beginnings is going to be absolutely unbelievable. Ziggenshaw is going to be very new to us, I mean, what's it going to be like? Well, Ziggenshaw is one of the biggest towns in this region, I mean, the whole Casamas, and Casamas is South Senegal. So it's the capital of South Senegal. It's very urban and um, the people are very nice. The stadium is quite a new one and it is the first time to have football in it. And the people are just looking forward to all the visitors coming in. It's a wonderful place and I'm sure you would like it. This is Ziggenshaw, where all the matches in Group C and D are being played before moving on to Dakar for the final stages. The teams have been very strong and the games have been very tough. These groups include much fancied Ghana and the reigning champions Algeria, who begin the defence of their title against the outsiders from the Ivory Coast. So here's Ben Salah for the Ivory Coast. Just about kept the ball in play, looking for Traore. Didn't hit it cleanly, but he didn't have to. Akau with this long throw. Then Halima climbs to the ball. Fufana, 2-0. Algeria have had all sorts of problems during this match. Reduced to 10 men after Adjas was sent off. Here's T now inside the final minute. And Algeria's woe is complete. 3-0 to the Ivory Coast. This is where you stand when you haven't got a ticket. So we still await the first goal of this game. La Balassia flicks it on. Bawala, yes! Zambia ahead after an hour of the game. The Group C game between Congo and the Ivory Coast ended goalless. But watch out here for Ghana's Abedi Pele. Yeboa's after this one. Chibala happy to head the ball on the edge of his box, only as far as Pele. Ibrahim. Pele again. Oh, we've waited a long time for a piece of skill like that. And Pele provides it. In the final Group C match, the holders Algeria have got to beat Congo's Red Devils to stay in the competition. What's the score going to be tonight? Can we have a prediction? <laughs> no English? No. 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 Oh. Yeah, but you're going to win. Yes, yes. Yeah, but you're going to win tonight. Yeah. OK. Yes. There you have it from the Tongians. Mutufa! Mutufa! Hamam! Mutufa! Hamam! Mutufa! Hamam! Mutufa! Hamam! Mutufa! Hamam! Sumu can get great length with these throws. Nagapi flicks on. Chibota! Oh, he hit the crossbar in the previous game. Now he's scored! A minute from half time is Saib. He's got round the back and an equaliser for Bwish. Is it enough to keep Algeria in the African Nations Cup? But a draw isn't enough. The champions are out. Congo and the Ivory Coast through from Group C. Half time in England and the queues are for Bovril and Mars bars. Here it's almost as bad a circumcision ceremony. Concrete steps aren't my favourite form of seating, no matter how exotic the surroundings. So I traded my stadium tickets 
his two pounds for two games out here and went looking for a touch of luxury. My search took me into the back alleys of Ziggenshaw, where I found a much comfier seat and settled down to watch the game on one of the few TVs in the whole of southern Senegal. Whenever I'm in Ziggenshaw, I always hang out with the lads at the bar. It's better than going to the game, isn't it? Well, Egypt in the green have had insufficient possession to carry through their good intentions, although here's Yeboa for Ghana. He's found half a yard on Ragab. Now, can he finish? Yes, he can! Right to the death, 1-0 to Ghana. Ghana looking good in Group D. They go through with Zambia, but the Egyptians are out. So with the group games over, the show moves on to Dakar for the final stages. The major shots, the elimination of the three Arab nations, Algeria, Egypt and Morocco. But as far as the local papers are concerned, the festival continues. Well, it's quarter final day, and as you can see, it's a cold, frosty morning in Dakar. No, seriously. I'm here standing outside the hotels, which the players are staying at. And really, compared to European Championships and the World Cups, the security is really lax, and uh, that gives us a chance to really get amongst the players and get some interviews. I mean, the whole place is really buzzing. Um, everyone's excited about the games tonight, and uh, it looks like it's going to be really good. Let's go see who we can find. I had a chance to play for this lot. I was born in Nigeria and came to England when I was 10. There's actually only one British-based player in the tournament, and he's a key member of the Nigerian squad. So I hear Swansea asking for you back. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's been a bit difficult for me to, um, to get sort of time away from the club. But um, FIFA regulations are quite sort of strict yeah. on, on the subject. So um, obviously I, I feel sorry for Swansea that I have to let them down. But... This must be a very big occasion. So yeah, I mean, it's... I can understand that you'd want to stay out here and yeah, play. It's so... not something you can turn down because it's going to happen again next year. You, have, well, you that's just right. have to sort of... Um, Go for it whilst it's, uh, whilst it's there. Oh, that's right. I mean, I'm sort of out, even though there's no chance of European Championships for me. Um, but, yeah. So I can understand you sort of wanting to play, but um, are you, you going to win? We need a prediction. Oh, yeah. I, th I think the camp's confident. Um, it's going to be very hard today. I think we're more worried about getting today's match over. Yeah. Then we just take the semi final, Ghana or Congo. Well, I'm going to be flying the flag for the Nigerians anyway. Cheers. Yeah, thanks very much. What do you think the difference are between, you know, like African football and European football, at, you know, sort of like international level? You know, it, it, it's quite different in Europe because Europe is more disciplined. It's, it's a job, you know, you have to do. It's yeah. like you work in the office to earn yeah. your living. Yeah. But in Africa, is the, they can take it to be a pleasure, kind of. Yeah. Um, but now, the professionals are coming in. The ones in Africa now, yeah. realizing that it's business. Yeah. And uh, the level is coming up. So midway through the first half, still Nigeria nil, Zaire nil. Ilaho. Looking for Yekini. Sia Sia. Yekini. 1 0 Nigeria. Well, they deserve that goal. Their domination of midfield and urgency of their play suggested that they would score first. And it's Yekini with his third goal of the tournament, which separates the sides. 23 minutes gone, Nigeria won, Zaire nil. Roger Miller's here, but this time he's in the commentary box, rather than scoring goals like this. Miller, good turn. Miller inside the penalty area. He gets off the line. Roger Miller's done it. He's the only swinger in town. Hey, Roger. How are you doing? Do you fancy the Cameroon's chances to win? Oh, I don't know. No? It's very uh, difficult. Yeah, it's, good. it's a very hard championship. Yeah, very, very hard. I think Nigeria and Ghana yeah, it's look very good sides. Uh, are you going to be playing yourself this year? Or? No. No, no. Just, you're just doing radio work? Yes. So, it's, uh, are you enjoying the games? Are they, are they for like, are they of the same quality as previous years, or do you think African football is stepping up, getting much higher? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. 
I think you do very well in the World Cups. America, maybe. Thank you. Do you think an African nation is going to win the World Cup That's in '84? Yeah. No, no. No. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> with another sterling challenge and the Senegal defence once again on red alert Mabu's cross Kanye Biek Ebongu three minutes from full time they've scored the substitute has done the damage and Cameroon can't quite believe it he came on for Tapoko and he scored what surely will be now the winning goal in this African Nations Cup quarter-final. Mabu picked out the head of Oman Beek, fell to Kanya Beek, and then into the path of the substitute Ebongu, who makes it 1-0. They can't quite believe it in the Friendship Stadium, because that goal will surely now signal the exit of the host Senegal from the African Nations Cup. Africa's arrival on the world soccer map has meant a huge increase in press and TV coverage. Even a few British newspaper men made the trip, the serious ones anyway. And the football magazine, when Saturday comes, ran a special charter trip for 80 British fans. The football... Um... So far, I mean, I've seen four games and three goals. It's been more dull than watching, uh, you know, park football. Chesterfield. Yeah, Chesterfield. Not Chesterfield, they're a very good side. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, are there any strange happenings, any weird things happen to you along the way? Any I mean, adventures? I've... Nothing no. too... Dr I've fell down a storm drain and that's about it. That's about it, a storm drain. <laughs> It's you... nothing, nothing to do with beer at all falling down the <laughs> storm drain. No. Have you got mugged? <laughs> I've had... Yeah. Tell yeah. us more about that. Well, I was just... Um, coming back yesterday and sort of, I don't know, they saw somebody jumped on front of somebody in front of us. And then I saw, and we got here and I was just pulling my friend back because we just sort because he just wandering past the apartments here. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, just some people just dumped, uh, jumped on me and tried to take my bag, but... So you, I did you lose anything? It. No, because luckily um, these people in here came out. We have a Leeds man here. <laughs> How are you enjoying the trip? I'm enjoying it great, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what, what, what really, Amazed me was the the atmosphere in that first game in Ziegenshaw. Yeah, you were there as well. Weren't yeah, you? yeah. I mean the the Congo fans. Yeah, who were all apparently Seneg Senegalese. Yeah, amazing. Oh wow! I mean, <laughs> they're just a lot uh, of energy. A lot of energy. We were we were spending more time watching them, perhaps joining in with them, than than watching the game. Well, yesterday some guy tried to sell us a pelican. A joke. For eating. Yeah. A pelican. A pelican. You yeah. didn't buy it. No, I, I mean, didn't fancy. I have pelican stew is quite nice, really. <laughs> well, I don't know. In Maybe. Dakar it is anyway. Maybe. What a difference a day makes. Last night, Senegal team were knocked out in front of a packed house here. Today, there's only a handful of Ivory Coast fans for the game against Zambia. Look at it, the place is absolutely empty. Of course, in Africa, you create your own atmosphere. the Ivory Coast again. Cassie, CA, it's taken a deflection and got in. Traore is going to claim it. We waited 90 minutes for a goal and now four minutes into extra time, the Ivory Coast have the lead. Will it be enough to take them through to the semi-finals to meet Cameroon? Cassie helping the ball on towards CA. In fact, it appeared to strike a defender and wrong foot the goalkeeper, Chibala. The Ivory Coast won, Zambia nil. Ghana haven't been to the final stages of this competition for eight years, but they're certainly the most entertaining team here. And of course, they've got the most exciting player, Africa's current footballer of the year, the Marseille winger, Abedi Pele. How does this compare to like the French league? I mean, playing on the on the continent? Well, um, it's really different because this um, African Cup of Nations and then uh, there's, uh, you know, the matches are not like a league matches that, you know, you always have time to, 
maybe if you lose a match, you'll have about five matches to play so that you can overcome the, your opponents. But this is very, very short, and then uh, um, you really need to win some matches. And then, yeah. You know, so it's really, really difficult for everyone, and then everyone is concentrating in it, so it's making things really hard, you know? Yeah. I mean, do you think African football is catching up rapidly with the, with the Europeans? Oh, yeah, that is really true, because if you look at um, what Cameroon did in the World Cup and then yeah. Egypt did in the World Cup, I think uh, things are really working very, very fast for the Africans, especially black Africans, because you can see that um, the African Cup of Nations of this year is really tough yeah. than the couple of years back, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, this year, for example, you can see that there have been a lot of uh, maybe foreign coaches yeah. handling uh, the countries, and then uh, there is a lot of tactical work and everything, and then you can see that there are a lot of professionals too who have come. FIFA have allowed each one to come and play for his country, yeah. so it's really making the teams really yeah. tough. Yeah. Ghana also have the man they call the world's most valuable player, 18-year-old Nii Odati Lamptey, fast becoming a major star with Anderlecht in the Belgian first division. Back in England, on, in Europe, you know, you're being billed as the next Pele or the next Maradona, you know, you're, you've got the star billing here. Is that a problem for you? Well, in yeah, a little bit problem with the competition like that because everybody knows me, you know. So, uh, if you can see against Egyptian, if, if I have the ball, they, like, they try to break my leg. Yeah, so the market so, you know, is difficult for me, but I'll try to do my best. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel a lot of pressure in this competition? Yeah, not, not really, but a little bit, but not much. Yeah, it must be yeah. nice to have people like Abdi Pele and those kind of guys playing alongside you. Does that help you? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you know, they give me confidence. Like Tony Yabwa, they give me confidence. We, we train together, we talk together, you know. They give me much, a lot of com confidence to play. So I don't have problem. I just play my game. What's that? The manager just gives you a free roll and tells you just to do your own thing? No, he did give about, yeah, two of us, I and Abede, to do our own thing. But, you know, I just give Abede to go ahead because if he's doing it and I'm doing it, it's going to be a problem for the team. Still stalemate, but here's Lamte. Yeboa, 1-0 Ghana. Half an hour in, and Yeboa breaks the deadlock. Ndomba, always heading for that dead ball line. Chibota's on the back post, and he's equalised! He scored against Algeria, the holders of the African Nations Cup, and now he's done it again against the favourites. The architect of the goal was Nadomba, but watch out for Chibota on the back post, completely unmarked, and with a stooping header, makes it 1-1. Questions must be asked about the Ghanaian defending. Pelly's found half a yard. He's past Muyabe. He's inside the box. Oh, it's the outstanding goal of the competition so far from Abide Pelle. Otto Fister's up off the bench. So too are the Ghanaian substitutes. Because they hail the man who could take Ghana all the way to the final. This was sensational. Miyabi didn't stand a chance, and neither did Brice Samba in the Congo goal. Look at the swerve on this shot. It's semi-final time, folks, and Ghana, who have certainly looked the most exciting team so far, have got a tough draw against the Super Eagles from Nigeria. And probably the people's favourites, Cameroon, have drawn the elephants from the Ivory Coast. We've been talking to the men under most pressure, the coaches. I mean, so like back at home, they don't know a lot about the organisation of, of the competition, but I mean, how have you found, you know, the running of this competition so far? All of the best African players are here without John Chalaka. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But all of the best are here and the competition is tough. They play good football, only uh, in the organisation there are some points who are not so well. Then never seen a tournament where all the uh, teams are together in one hotel. Yeah, if you do that no, in Europe, yeah. <laughs> if I you do know. that in Europe, I don't see England, Germany and, and Holland in one hotel. No, that's right, <laughs> that's right. 
nous connaissons bien le Nigeria parce que nous avons euh, les Blacks de Ghana, ils ont joué les, pendant la qualification. On a fait match nul 0-0 à Lagos, à Lagos, without professional players, without Pele, without Yeboah, without Ali Ibrahim. Et, 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 et ce team has win le, uh, the retro match in Kumasi 1-0 also. We have in the last two, three years, we have all matches, we have win or draw with Nigeria. It's, it's not a problem. You've actually been eating your meals at the embassy. Is there any reason for that, any special reason? Yeah, uh, if you are the opponent of the hosted team, Yeah. Then they do something with you, you know. It starts with small, small things. <laughs> And the Cameroons um, did not... Uh, no, first, first it was this. Uh, it take long time for the food. And you know when Nigerians must wait for food, they are very angry. Definitely. And at home they can say food here. And in one or two minutes the food is there. So it take one and a half hours, so they don't like that. And certainly we stand up and we went out here and eat here. We went to the buffet. And what is this? Take too long time, so we eat here. And then the next time it was Cameroon, was the opponent of um, Senegal. And they did the same. But the Cameroons did it on another way. They went into the kitchen and broke all the boards. <laughs> oh, no. But, uh... So um, we go to the embassy and eat there. Oh, all is possible in football. We have a chance like all other, other teams. I think we have a very good team. Cameroon had a very good team. Nigeria also is not so bad. Uh, In the semi-final, is a question, is a, is a cap, a cap, is a ca ca knockout system. All, all is possible. Yeah. May I hope uh, we have a very good, uh, we have, a, we have a very good chance. Yeah. But so I mean, back at home, I mean, everyone's really taking so much interest in African football now, yeah. and there's a lot of coverage as like this program. I mean, how long do you think it is before maybe an African nation wins the World Cup? Wins the World Cup is a big word, but come to the last four and to a final, I think in eight years they are there. Eight years. By the end of the century, in other words. I want to be there in the next uh, World Cup, 1994. And if you are not playing more for England, you play for us. <laughs> okay, I'll take <laughs> up on that. <laughs> Aliha. Adeposhu, it's crept in. Adeposhu gives Nigeria the lead after 11 minutes. And where were the tall Ghanaian defenders? Kaisari to take the corner. Here's Pele. 1-1! One, one. Oh, an outrageous goal by Abide Pele. His third competition. Apoko celebrates with the Ghanaian players. But why didn't Nigeria have a man waiting on the right-hand upright? It would have saved the goal. Ruben Agbula on the left-hand upright. Nobody on the right. Still 1-1. One, one. Corner then to Ghana. Abora, Apoku! Ghana have come from behind and now lead Nigeria by two goals to one. And are in sight of the African Nations Cup final. Apoko from close range after Abore had turned the ball on. So, as Coach Fister confidently predicted, Ghana have made it past Nigeria, but at what cost? The star player of these finals, Abedi Pele, leaves the field in tears. He knows he won't be playing in the finals because he picked up his second booking of the tournament. At the age of 30, he knows he's unlikely to get another chance. Just last for England. What does he think the chances are of the Ivory Coast winning the whole competition now? C'est quoi? Nous avons toujours joué les premiers rôles. Je dis non. Euh, nous avons toujours joué le spectacle et nous retournons chez nous sans la coupe. Et je pense qu'aujourd'hui, les, les joueurs savent qu'il faut jouer utile, il faut jouer le résultat. Et le beau football, après, après un match de, de football, on demande qui a gagné, on ne demande pas qui a bien joué. À l'époque, les joueurs, on a, on a même eu parfois le trophée fair play, etc. etc. mais jamais le trophée lui-même. La Coupe du Monde, c'est il y a deux ans. Donc deux ans, c'est énorme dans une carrière de joueur professionnel. C'est le tiers d'une carrière, puisque la moyenne d'une carrière d'un joueur, c'est six ans. Donc en deux ans, il se passe beaucoup de choses. Bon, c'est vrai que le Cameroun a apporté beaucoup au football africain, puisque pour la prochaine Coupe du Monde, il y a un troisième pays qualifié grâce au Cameroun. Mais il y a le revers de la médaille, c'est que toutes les équipes, et c'est bien normal, veulent battre le Cameroun et, et se donnent à fond dans 
dans leur confrontation contre, contre cette équipe. But Cameroon couldn't break down an unbeaten Ivory Coast defense despite missing a penalty and hitting the post in the first minute. So it's down to a penalty shootout. And as we join it, both sides have taken two penalties. Oh dear, that was an absolutely awful penalty. Roman Bieck has the chance to bring Cameroon level here. And he's missed it. is 3-1. Well, what a twist here. One goalkeeper against another. Bell has to score against his counterpart to keep his team in it. And it was an awful penalty again. And Ivory Coast have done it. Ivory Coast have made the final. More than 30 teams started this competition over a year ago. Now we're down to the last two. In just a few hours, the final begins. Ghana versus the Ivory Coast. The prize, the 18th African Nations Cup. Welcome to this 18th African Nations Cup final. Let's have a look at the Ghanaian team. Defender appear, midfield player Ibrahim out, but of course the man they'll miss most of all, the African player of the year, Abidi Pelé, who's already scored three goals for them in this tournament. Prince Polly, who came on as a substitute and scored the winner against Nigeria, not surprisingly keeps his place. The Ivory Coast team, well, the big news here, still no Fofana, the Monaco player who has been injured since the first game, in fact, of the tournament. But Abdulou Traore, who is the record goal scorer in Ivory Coast international history, he claims over 60 international goals, is back in the side. The referee today, Badar Sene, is from the host nation. And Dakar, the city which has now hosted 14 of the 20 games the tournament began back here two weeks ago, now stages the final. Ghana in the yellow shirts, attacking from right to left. Ivory Coast forced to change into their second strip of green shirts and white shorts. I'm sorry if you find the numbers a little bit hard to read on the Ghanaian players' jerseys, so do we. looked absolutely outstanding and scored some cracking goals three all together in this competition I'll break off as danger threatens again here and the defender has played a suicide ball back into the middle and that should have been a goal for Prince Polly in the opening five minutes Ghana should have gone in front it was a disastrous decision by the defender and Prince Polly ought to have punished them this should have been number one Avery Coulston all sorts of problems there Oh, it's a, it's a heaven sent opportunity. Big interest here, of course. This final going worldwide on television for the first time in its history. Many European countries seeing these players in action for the first time ever. Kwame Akar. And again, he gets a good distance on them. Very useful weapon, that is. And from it, indeed, they might well have scored a goal. I think it was Traore. It was Abdoulaye Traore with the header. Martin. Well, it, it's, it's a tactic that almost worked a few times against Cameroon. You mentioned Akar's very, very long throw. Terrific. Tihai got up to get a nice touch on. And Traore, well, most certainly tested Ansa if he didn't actually beat him. Knocked out of play for a throw in to Ghana. Sam, the tall central defender, getting there just ahead of Yaboa. And here he is again, trying to win the corner off Akar, but doesn't do so. Diaby clears his lines, it comes back in again. 
Ivory Coast, so comfortable on the ball, as all these teams have been in these championships. The uh, skill factor, a big thing, and we can see it again here now, and that could have been really dangerous because Traore was in a perfect position, and had goalkeeper Ansar not made a timely interception then, Ivory Coast might well have found themselves in the lead. Gala hit back as quickly as they can, and this too looks dangerous for the Ivory Coast players. Asare. The shot blocked from Abura. And they've got it back again. Looks like a foul on Asare, not given though. And threaded through by Mensah and a poor ball. It was a good attack by Ivory Coast. Just felt that perhaps maybe he had to cut it a little bit, a bit further back. Uh, give really no problem to answer. Ivory Coast already had known that they're in a big game because no sooner had did that attack break down that Ghana were on the attack on the other end. And unlike Cameroon in the semi-final, uh, Ivory Coast were able to retreat with no real problem. Here Ghana have uh, thrust forward very, very incisively and I feel that Ivory Coast will have to guard that despite the fact that they have to get attacks themselves. And here they go again looking dangerous down that left-hand side. And that seems to be the problem area as far as Ghana are concerned. I was saying they'd switched Asari over from the right-back position to the left-back. And uh, maybe they have to think about switching him back again because there's all kinds of gaps opening on Ghana's right-hand side of the field defensively. But they're now going forward into a good area again and an attacking sense, but a wasted opening, really. A poor cross. And the Senegalese referee, Badan Sene, We'll blow the whistle for the start of the second half here. And let's hope we see a little more goal mouth action than we did in the first half. The football was admirable enough. Good skills from both sets of players. But uh, both goalkeepers not really tested often enough for the sake of neutral spectators. Garner have won an early free kick here in a dangerous position. Lampte, foul. He's certainly one of those on the field capable of breaking the deadlock here. Manuel Ampia will take the kick to test Alan Guamani. Yaboa, an obvious target here, the tall number nine, and Baffo, the central defender who comes forward for most of these. In fact, he fools everybody by knocking it to his right, and it wasn't a bad effort at all. Well saved. Mensah with the shot, and the goalkeeper did well, really, to readjust here, because I suspect, like most of us, he was expecting the ball to be clipped in for one of the big men on the far post. CA playing it in field. This looks promising, knocking the ball about neatly here, and then Magui gave it away, but they've rather fortunately got it back with Otto Kore. And he goes round the first challenge well, Otto Kore, and was surely pushed over, wasn't he, by Ampia? Again, the referee hasn't given it, play on the decision. Good running then by Yaboa, turned his defender beautifully. Now takes up a position in the middle, hoping for the cross. Well, it looked close. I'm not quite sure it was as close as the crowds, ooh and ah, seem to indicate then. And Garner suddenly break quickly with uh, Lampte and Yaboa looking very lively up front. But sheer weight of numbers overcame them then. Mensah beaten to it, and a good ball played out to that far side, and they've got players again in the middle here, Lehigh and Traore, and that was real danger. The ball striking the bar. Easy for Amar, Emmanuel Amar, the big defender who was sent off in one of the early games in the tournament against Egypt. And in the words of the old cliche, it has been a day when defences have been on top this. Good run by Yaboa, and suddenly danger here, and again it was Polly who couldn't get the ball under control. Lovely little ball to release him by Yaboa. And it may have been a bobble on this awful surface, or it may have been a poor first touch by Polly, but just as quickly as the chance came, it was gone. 
As Magui swings one in to Garner's penalty area, easily dealt with though by Bafo. Sam's clearance, not a good one. Straight back to Garner and Pierre playing it back in field again to Mensah. Mensah opens it up, or tries to anyway. Looking for Asari on the left, and Asari's done well here. Good work by Asari, and a useful looking cross as well. This could be it. The substitutes bundle it towards goal and couldn't get it over the line. Nawu and then Lamte both threatening danger, and Guamani's goal is still intact, astonishingly. I thought Guamani has done brilliantly again. He's had to come out, he's thrown himself there, he's, he's tried to get the nick, he's hurt himself. But it was an excellent chance for Ghana. Excellent chance. Again, great ball in. It's, it's one of those that it just is not coming down for me. He decides to knock it over the defender's head. Guiamini has come out. He, I, I thought that he uh, he took his life in his hands there. And he's injured. And um, it, it'll be a shame if he doesn't get up out of this one. Well, that was brave goalkeeping by Alan Guiamini. He got injured, remember, in the uh, semi-final against Cameroon. Martin, this was terrific play here, wasn't it, on the uh, left-hand side by Ex Asari. Asari has done incredibly well, incredibly well. It's a great ball in. He knows that there's two or three Ghana players in there. All he has to do is just find an area. It's, it's, the, the, the bobble has is, is affected the game more than anything else. But again, I felt Guamini, he's just going down there. I, I thought he's done brilliantly there. Well, for the second game in succession. Concern amongst the Ivory Coast reporters and commentators, but particular concern on the bench as their goalkeeper requires lengthy treatment. He's all right. Strange enough, just a moment or two ago, I was going to say to you, Alan, that for the most part, the Ivory Coast haven't had to defend that desperately in situations like that. You know, they've been reasonably comfortable, and Guiamani must be very, very proud of the men in front of them. They've done a splendid job, and there suddenly they just lost possession on the right-hand side of the field. It was it was just a bad ball out. Uh, that delayed in possession of the ball, lost it. Asari has made a terrific run in, and it's a great ball in. And from it, after all the excitement and the treatment to Guamani, Ghana only have a corner. Ampere with the kick then, and another test for Guamani, having just been injured. It's hit in deep, and the shot came through the crowd of players and could easily have been turned in by Mensah on the near post. They had two or three players in a good position then. Polly was another one of them. It's just... To me, it's just a lazily taken corner kick. It's gone in. He's had a, a, an excellent shot. It's, oh, it's gone so very, very, very close. We've got a minute to go, plus time to be added for stoppages, and there will be a little bit of that for the injury to Gourmani, the Ivory Coast goalkeeper. We're still waiting for the crucial first goal of this final. Ivory Coast go forward with CA. He's dispossessed, though, by a fine challenge. A dangerous-looking ball out to Yaboa. Oh, he's hit the post, and they couldn't quite get the rebound forced in. Well, would you believe it? Lamte, in fact, the player who hit the shot, and with less than a minute to go, well, the game would surely have been well had that gone in. It was a splendid effort and whacked against the upright with the goalkeeper apparently beaten. Well, you may get a chance to see it, but I mean, if, if uh, for all the credit that will be thrown on Guiamini, if he had been beaten, despite the fact that has been hit with such venom, if he'd been beaten at the near post, Alan, with a minute to go, I think he would have been desperately on board with himself. Despite the fact that it was a powerful shot. Only free kick which was a poor one initially, was cleared, and the second shot in wasn't a bad effort. There's the shot against the upright. It's most certainly a thunderous shot when he left it. Isn't it amazing he made all this time? We're now, in fact, into time being added for a first really clear shot at goal from any uh, distance. The other efforts have been rather scrambled efforts in the box. Boa going up well, and couldn't really turn quickly and get behind the shot. Oh, 
Rangers as we move into stoppage time. Perhaps the intention of the upright has underlined the fact that uh, we've got two teams here who are going to take a great deal of separating. We might have to go all the way to penalties again, I suspect. Good work over by Traore. And Traore's got round the defender here. And the cross didn't really carry any weight at all. Conviction. Pity that from the coast point of view. When you see the Ghanaian effort today, you can see how much uh, of what an importance that a BD Kelly is to them. And that is the final whistle. In fact, Martin, we have reached 90 minutes. Ghana, Ivory Coast nil. A disappointing final in which there have been so few opportunities, but sensationally, Vivitri could have gone Ghana's way right to the death when Lamte hit the post with a fine shot. The match went into extra time, and Ivory Coast had a great chance to win it in the very last minute. Joel T high through, but he couldn't finish it off. What an opportunity. So to the penalties. Gone on a miss one. So here's another chance for every cost. And guess who? It's T high again. This is for the championship. It's agony. Sudden death now, and honestly, it goes to 10 all. Even the goalkeepers have scored. Back to the beginning. Indeed, we have gone right the way back to the beginning in the sense that Akar will have to take the next kick for the Ivory Coast. We still, of course, have the sudden death aspect of this. We'll get another compulsory five per side. Officer, the coach, I'm happy about something. So we're still down to the situation where if one team scores, the other misses, it's all over. A car for the Ivory Coast. It was a bit lazy, and a lot of fortune went into it. And so furious, a car's relieved. He scored again. It's 11 10 to the Ivory Coast. Just went through answers. Right way. Box up in a decent position. Oh. So presumably now Baffo, the captain, will come forward again. Yes, there he is. Just to take this next penalty for Ghana. And must score. Psychologically, one feels that winning the past again, the first penalty, has given the Ivory Coast a big advantage here. Because each time they score. Each time they score, of course, the pressure's on Ghana to make sure that they equalise. Baffo's got to score this one. He's missed it! The Ivory Coast have won the cup! The scenes of separation are fantastic, and why not? For the first time in their history, the Ivory Coast can call themselves the champions of all Africa. By 11 goals to 10 in the penalty shootout, they have beaten the champion of all the champions, Ghana, and history has been made here in Dakar.